probably seen video clips in recent weeks highlighting moments in the history of Sesame Street. These have been popular lately because this past week marked the 40th anniversary of the very first episode. I know I've seen quite a few that uh, were kind of entertaining and several I recognized actually from my own childhood when I watched the show. This is one of the ones that I discovered that features a uh, popular celebrity appearance which I think captures the spirit of the show pretty well. Hey, how's it going? I'm Jack, and today I'm here to tell you about the word octagon. Now, octagon is an amazing shape that has eight fantastic sides and eight awesome angles. Here, let me show you. Oh, no. Oh, man! I totally forgot to bring an octagon! This is embarrassing. Okay, don't worry. We can go find one. Come on, let's go find an octagon. Stop! Sorry, Elmo, I can't stop at the stop sign right now. I'm busy looking for an octagon. Stop! Okay, Elmo, I see the stop sign, but I have to find an octagon. If I stop, how can I find an octagon? How, Elmo? How? Stop! <gasps> Wait a minute. Look! The stop sign has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight glorious sides, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stunning angles. This stop sign is an octagon. We found an octagon. <laughs> octagon. <laughs> so as you can see from that clip, Sesame Street combines humor and educational concepts, which sometimes feature celebrity guests, to create situations that children can appreciate and learn from. I'm going to go over the elements of Sesame Street that have made it successful for so many years, including the history, the philosophy, and the characters. And hopefully all of you will gain an appreciation for this show because it's played a big part in the lives of many people during their most impressionable years. From the beginning of the show, in November of 1969, the goal of Sesame Street was to educate children in poor inner city districts. In the 60s, the concept of using television as an educational tool was unprecedented and a lot of people were skeptical that it could work. The original members of the Children's Television Workshop Corporation conducted research and they decided that if te television could hold the attention of kids, they could use it to educate them. One of the key elements of the show that helped to keep the attention of kids was the introduction of Muppets, which are the puppet-like characters, mostly monsters and some animals, and um, they're involved in most of the dialogue in the show. So the first episode, episode aired on November 10th, 1969, and it was an immediate hit, so they planned on um, airing more seasons of the show and that opened up a lot of new opportunities. The producers created an environment on the set which looked like a real inner city street. It had uh, front porches, storefronts, alleys, street lights, all that kind of stuff that looks like a real urban setting. Um, they named it Sesame Street for no particular reason. They just thought it would sound catchy to kids, even though it might be difficult for some to pronounce. I personally couldn't pronounce it as a kid, so I just called it the Elmo Show, based on one of the characters. Um, and for the format, I think one of the key features is the combination of live action and animated portions, which often includes educational commercials. Um, rather than intermissions for a real sponsored ad, uh, a show would be sponsored by a letter and a number. Like, they might um, have an animated portion with like a colorful letter H dancing around instead of um, showing an actual sponsor. And that meant a lot more to the primary audience and a lot more time for relevant content. Uh, what's interesting is that when the show was in its early stages, many of the aspects of Sesame Street that became a key part of it were discouraged. The producers were advised not to portray conversations between humans, humans and the Muppet characters because it would be awkward and too unrealistic for the show to be successful. They were also discouraged from portraying racial integration because it was uncommon in any form of entertainment at that, at that time. And it became prominent and successful in Sesame Street because it didn't bother young children. Um, so in its early years, doing things that were unconventional is what established Sesame Street as a reputable show, and it's maintained that, um, that legacy for a very long time. Sesame Street currently stands as the number one um, largest informal educator of children internationally. And around the world, Sesame Street takes on many different formats. Over 30 different countries have their own version of Sesame Street with characters exclusive to their culture. Um, South Africa, for example, they have their own character that's HIV positive. It's not in America, it's exclusive to their culture. Um, and some countries that don't even have TV just have Sesame Street puppet shows that tour the cities on a cart. So some are more, more or less formal than others, but they all incorporate a similar style. In the modern American version of Sesame Street, there are a few prominent characters that have lasted several decades, and they each have unique traits. 
Um, well, there should be another slide, but I'll just go over the characters, and some of you might be familiar with them. Oh, here we go. Um, there's Elmo. He's small and inquisitive, so children identify with him. Big Bird, he's the largest, and he portrays leadership qualities. Cookie Monster, of course, loves cookies, but he tries to incorporate more healthy foods into his diet now. Bert and Ernie, they are not gay, but they live together happily, <laughs> despite their differences. Um, Grover is a reporter, and he interviews kids. Oscar the Grouch lives in a garbage can, and he demonstrates moods and emotions. So, clearly, just by demonstrating different types of personalities that exist in the world and the situations that everyone is likely to encounter, Sesame Street succeeds in preparing children for the world while holding their attention and keeping them entertained. I know it certainly did that for me, it might have done that for some of you, but even if you're now too old to enjoy Sesame Street like a kid does, I hope you're still able to appreciate it as much as I do. Thank you.